to the daily current affairs session by new IAS. Today, the 10th of April, let us take a look at the important topics for the day. The first is a Vishwadhi scheme. Uh, second one is Shodh Ganga, it is a portal. Uh, Cyprus, uh, the island nation was in news. Uh, investigator brochures, uh, organ donation mechanism in India. Saptak annual festival of music. Then we have the current affairs modules. Let us take a detailed look at all these. The first is a Vishwaji scheme. Uh, this is actually a, screen, a scheme to bring the top seven IITs of India into the global rankings. At present, we have no uh, institutes from India in the topmost league of the global ranking institutes. So this scheme, Vishwaji scheme was introduced by the government to bring the top seven IITs into the global ranking. Uh, how do we do that? By giving infrastructure upgradation, uh, hiring foreign faculty and also with collaborations with the foreign institutions. Uh, this, but this a point to be noted here is the scheme is not anymore in use. It is uh, scrapped by the Union Finance Ministry. We have other schemes like uh, HEFA, etc. Now the Vishuddhi scheme is not in uh, vogue. The uh, second is Shodh Ganga. This is actually a portal uh, where we can uh, find the theses and uh, dissertations uh, published in the Indian University. So these uh, theses can be found in the digital portal called Shodh Ganga. Uh, this is maintained by Inflip Net Center. This is an autonomous uh, inter-university center of University Grants Commission UGC. In Flipnet Flip Center, it is based in Gujarat University, Ahmedabad. Uh, this uh, software used here is open source, so everyone would have access to it. Open source software is named DSpace. It is developed by uh, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Hewlett Packard, HP. MIT and HP have jointly developed this open source software, DSpace. Uh, so the main feature to be noted is Shodhanga portal is an open source software, so everybody would have access to it. Thereby, the what is the advantage? It would solve the issue of research duplication and poor quality. What we uh, the issue that we face now is a duplication of researchers. People tend to copy research. There is no originality in those works. So that issue can be resolved by this portal, Shodhanga portal. Now the next is uh, Cyprus, the island nation, Mediterranean island nation was in news. The High Commissioner of Cyprus was here f to attend a conference. So uh, Cyprus, it is specifically Eastern Mediterranean. UPSC uh, has a liking towards asking such questions uh, in the prelims. Uh, Eastern Mediterranean nation, capital is Nicosia. Uh, it is the third largest and third most populous island in the Mediterranean. It was uh, independent in 1960 from the British. It has two parts, uh, northern part and southern part. The northern part is called Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. The southern independent Republic of Cyprus, it is also called Greek Cyprus. Uh, there is a region between north and south. It is called the Green Line. You have the uh, UN Petrol Forces there. Uh, it divides the capital as well, Nicosia, Green Line. So such questions can be ha uh, had. Um, Green line separates northern Cyprus from southern Cyprus. It is a popular tourist destination, high income country, very high human development index. Uh, now you need to uh, look at the map of Cyprus. You can find it is, uh, and there is no land border with any other nation, but the maritime uh, neighbors are Greece, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, Israel. You here you have Egypt and Libya. These are the neighbors of Cyprus, the world map is very important for the prelims. Next is, uh, we already know that Cyprus is uh, called a tax haven and we know what is a tax haven is, there would be minimal tax liability, so corporates would look to get uh, minimal uh, corporate tax there. So uh, other examples of uh, tax havens are British Virgin Islands, Cayman Islands, Panama was in news, Mauritius, etc. The point to be noted is they do not require individuals or businesses to reside in those countries. In order to avail the tax policies of these tax havens, the individuals or businesses, they don't require to reside in those countries. The residence clause is not needed. 
that can be a possible uh, statement for the prelims. Next is the investigator brochure. Actually, these are documents which the uh, drug makers use. The drug makers, they specify the uh, animal data on the efficacy of new drugs. Whenever they make some new drugs, how it is uh, effic efficient in the animals be before uh, applying it on humans, they use animals for it. So those data is available in the investigator brochure. The name comes from the fact that it uh, gives investigators or any other uh, authorities the uh, details about the drugs, uh, its frequency, the methods of administration, whether it is oral or in by injection, uh, other safety monitoring procedures. So all this data can be had from investigator brochures. This can be a single statement question. Investigation, investigator brochure refers to which of the following. Uh, it should be reviewed annually and if any uh, marketing approvals are found for the drug, it should be mentioned in this document. The news was that uh, there was a recent report that such IBs, they do have large gaps because what is being stated in those uh, IBs are very far from reality. That was a report that we had very recently. That is how this is in use, investigative brochures. Next is organ donation mechanism in India. In India, organ donation is governed by this act, Transplantation of Human Organ Act, which was passed in 1994. Uh, according to this act, brain death is a form of death. So there can be questions like it is not recognized as a form of death. So that is a wrong statement. It is a form of death and also organ sale, it is a punishable offense according to this act. Now you can, uh, we all know that near relatives or unrelated persons can donate organs to any other person. Now the, this point is very significant. Near relative, if, if he donates it, then the hospital committee, that is the whichever hospital is doing the transplantation operation, they should form a committee and ensure that this organ donation is purely altruistic. There is no money motive behind it. That is to be determined by hospital committee if it happens to be a near relative donor. But on the other hand, if it is an unrelated donor, it should be vetted by a state government appointed committee. That is the difference. If it is an unrelated donor, a state government appointed committee must vet that this is purely altruistic. Uh, organ trade involving any uh, money or remuneration is purely illegal in India. If uh, we find that some donor has uh, uh, is driven by money motive, he, he would be arrested for a 5 to 10 year jail and a fine would range from 20 lakh to 1 crore. So this point uh, regarding the vetting, it is important. Now the NOTO, National Organ and Tissue Transplant Organization, uh, it would, um, now we face a shortage of organ, uh, organ donation. So it is uh, to ensure that the organs are timely uh, retrieved from deceased donors and made available to the needy. Uh, it is uh, under the Directory General of Health Services, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. So the ministries and departments can be important. It has two divisions. One is National Human Organ and Tissue Removal and Storage Network, National Biomaterial Center. Now we know that the uh, health is a state subject. So Obviously, NOTO would have its uh, state or regional counterparts, uh, Zonal Transplant Coordination Center and also ROTO, Regional Organ and Tissue Transplant Organization, which comes under this national program. So, which it comes under which ministry, it is quite obvious, it is Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Next is a culture uh, subject, Saptak Annual Festival of Music. Uh, this is actually the Saptak, the name comes from, it is organized by Saptak School of Music. This is a 13 day Indian classical music festival. It is conducted in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. It is a specifically Hindustani classical music festival, Saptak Annual Festival. Annual, it is conducted annually. Uh, the date is Jan, January 1 to 13. It has been invoked since 1980. Uh, it uh, houses both emerging talents as well as established performers. Uh, there is a mix of all this, not just pure classical music. It also has um, folk music or classical dance forms. It is a combination of all this. 
Now there is a mention of semi-classical forms like thumri. So let us take a look at this. Thumri it is a common genre of a semi-classical Indian music. It is semi-classical thumri. Uh, if the text would be a romantic version or devotional song, especially uh, like we have the Mira Bhajans, uh, similar to that, the girl's devotion to Lord Krishna, it is being depicted in Thumri. It uh, characterizes sensuality and also a specific point is it has flexibility of raga. So, uh, there is no rigid raga in uh, Thumri, it has flexibility of raga. The term Thumri comes from the Hindi verb th thumakna to make dance-like movements. Uh, it, so, it has a dance plus a dramatic, a dramatic gestures. So, Thumri can be a possible question from the culture part for prelims. Now, the current affairs modules, we have the Clean Sea 2017. This is a regional level marine oil pollution response exercise. We have uh, many uh, oil uh, spill emergencies in our seas as of late. So, uh, this is a, a specific example. Clean Sea 2017 caters to uh, uh, t uh, testing or preparedness of the Indian Coast Guard to tackle such oil spill disasters. This was conducted uh, in the sea of Port Blair. Uh, how do we uh, test the preparedness? Whether it is in accordance with NOSE DCP. We know NOSE DCP is National Oil Spill Disaster Contingency Plan. We already have a plan whether we are prepared to tackle such disasters in accordance with this plan that is being ensured by this Clean Sea 2017 exercise. There can be misleading statements like this is a bilateral exercise between so and so countries. It is not. Clean Sea 2017 is an um, oil spill disaster preparedness uh, program. Uh, next is DAMP. Uh, it stands for Dark Matter Particle Explorer. The DNA comes in the first word itself. Dark Matter Particle Explorer. This is a Chinese satellite. This can be a single statement question. DAMP is uh, four statements. So, it is a Chinese satellite, DAMP. Uh, it actually searches uh, for the decay of uh, dark matter particles in space. It is into uh, researching about the dark matter particle probability. Uh, there is one specific uh, hypothesis about the dark matter. There is no generalized version as, as such. But uh, this uh, hypothesis stands like dark matter is composed of particles called WIMS. WIM stands for weakly interacting massive particle. So, uh, this uh, specific satellite is uh, looking for clues uh, to uh, find whether this hypothesis stands correct. So, hypothesis for dark matter uh, which is uh, which states that the dark matter consists of particles called WIMS. Uh, this satellite it actually uh, collects high energy cosmic ray electrons and antimatter contract positrons uh, which are emitted. Uh, we know uh, da the dark matter phenomenon, uh, supernovae and pulses. These are not very significant, but the single statement question can be damn is it is actually a Chinese satellite. And uh, that's all for the day. Uh, study well. Take care. <laughs>